Blender is a famous 3D software that can be used for modeling, animation, visual effects, and it also includes a video editor. But is it really good for editing videos? Today we're gonna talk about the Blender Video Sequence Editor and how it can help you edit your videos. What is the Video Sequence Editor? Blender can be used to edit videos. There are two possible methods for this, one being the compositor, but most people would prefer to use the Video Sequence Editor, sometimes shortened to just Sequencer. The sequencer within Blender is a complete video editing system that allows you to combine multiple video channels and add effects to them. You can use these effects to create powerful video edits, especially when you combine it with the animation power of Blender. The Blender Video Sequence Editor in Films The Blender Foundation actually created several open movie projects over the years. And these movies were created for the most part using Blender, including the video editing part. So the Blender Video Sequence Editor was used to work on some of these series projects, which shows that it can handle adding together and editing clips with their effects and so on. This part of Blender was not being actively developed in recent years, but lately, especially with the 2.8 release and beyond, things have changed for the better with new tools and features. What can you do using the Blender Video Sequence Editor? To use the Video Sequence Editor, you can load multiple video clips and lay them end to end, overlay them, and you can insert fades and transitions to link one video to another. And you can add audio and synchronize the timing of the video sequence to match it. Like any other video editing software, Blender offers a variety of tools that can help video editors and filmmakers to combine clips and videos and audio together by cutting, moving, snapping, splitting, and duplicating stripes as well as more complex tasks like video masking and color grading. These operations are not exclusive to video only, because you can also edit audio as well, since Blender Video Sequencer offers two channels, one for video and the other for audio. There are up to 32 slots for adding video, images, audio, scenes, masks, and effects. So basically you can add as many effects on top of your original clips, whether it be images, tags, other videos, and you can even add videos with a green screen if you want to integrate other elements. The Blender Video Sequence Editor also allows you to see live preview, Luma waveform, chroma vector scope, and histogram displays. These are different modes that can be helpful for different purposes. And of course, there are many controls and parameters that you can use to change many things like speed control, adjustment layers, transitions, keyframes, filters, and more. Why choose Blender for video editing? Number one, it is completely free and open source. If you don't know yet, Blender is a completely open source and free to use software that can help you do a lot of things like 3D modeling, animation, visual effects, and of course video editing. It is actually one of the most advanced free video editors out there on the market right now. Number two, it is very stable and powerful. The video sequence editor in Blender is very powerful and stable as well which makes it even better for putting together large sequences or editing complex videos for free. From the experience of many people who do video editing work using Blender, it is stable compared to the other video editors. This is actually expected from a software such as Blender because it can handle complex visual effects work, large-scale 3D scenes with millions of polygons, and creating long animations with many characters and moving parts in a scene. Number three, you can work on the whole project. As we said before, Blender can do all these things like modeling, animation, effects, and so on. So if you want to render your scenes and combine them using the video sequence editor, you can do that. Like how the Blender Animation Studio team was able to create their open movie projects using Blender and its tools. Number four, it was improved and new tools were added in the 2.8 release. The features and new tools that have been added or improved with the 2.8 release makes it an option that a lot of people are beginning to consider because now it is on par with very respectable commercial video editors out there in the market. Number five, it is flexible. Since Blender is open source, you can use Python programming language to add features that you believe are lacking in the Blender video editor right now. You can do so if you want to do your work or contribute to the development of Blender. Actually, this is an area where the Blender development team and volunteers are putting increasingly more effort into it because it is such a useful part of Blender, so if you've got skills and you want to help, you can do that. You can also use add-ons to add to the existing features of Blender, 
which is great if you come from another video editing software and there are some features that don't exist already in the Blender video sequence editor yet. But I am sure that with the rate of progress of Blender, a lot of tools and features will be added soon either directly or using add-ons. Blender versus the other video editing software. There are a lot of video editing software, whether they are paid or free. Software such as Adobe Premiere Pro, Final Cut Pro, Sony Vegas, Camtasia and free ones or those that have free versions like the SDC Free Video Editor, Movie Maker, Shotcut, DaVinci Resolve and so on. I can tell you that Blender is the best video editing software out there, but I can confidently say that it is one of the best ones right now. It does not have all the features that professional video editors need and it is not the best optimized in terms of speed and other factors, but it is being developed faster right now to meet the needs of those who do video editing. New features in the Blender Video Sequence Editor The Interface With the complete revamp of the Blender user interface, we also got a new look and feel to the Blender Video Sequence Editor as well. And now it looks much better and everything seems like a modern video editing program. Changes to the text or font With the new release of Blender 2.8, we got better looking fonts and way more options when it comes to how the text appears in our videos. Because before that, the video sequence editor had very basic fonts with very little control which basically was better than having nothing. Quick access to menus. Now you can right click on the video clips or audio clips to get access to menus that include the basic functions that are used often in addition to the other tools. This can actually help you to save time and work quickly. Cache preview. Now using Blender Video Sequence Editor, you have control over the cache preview. You can basically allocate more computer resources to view shorter or longer sections of your clips depending on your needs or the power of your machine. Images and text are alpha over by default. Now in the new releases, the text and images are by default alpha over, meaning that any text or image you add on top of your existing clips will automatically have transparent background behind them which is a no-brainer for the other editing software, but it is actually a fantastic feature that can help you to be more productive. To be honest, this option existed in Blender, but you had to choose it yourself before the new updates. Stripe Time Properties In Blender now, you can also see frames in addition to time, which is very helpful for animation work. Better control of audio waves and volume This is a visual improvement to the way you see audio in the sequencer which helps you to identify the changes you made to the audio and how it differs from the other parts of the audio clips included in the video sequence editor. And of course, there are a lot of audio features that you can use as well. How to increase the video sequence editor performance If you are facing problems with performance in Blender video sequence editor, you can actually do a few things. Playback performance can be improved in several ways. The biggest impact on performance is to allow the video sequence editor to cache the playback. There are two levels of cache. The first is RAM cache. This is enabled by default, but can be increased based on the amount of RAM available. The next level of cache is disk cache that stores cache strips on disk. A disk cache can generally cache more than a RAM cache, but it can be slower. Both of these cache options can be configured in the preferences. Another way to improve performance is by using Stripe proxies. These are used to cache images or movies in a file that is easier to play back by reducing image quality by either decreasing the resolution or compressing the image. The future of Blender in video editing. Blender video sequence editor was going to be removed in the 2.8 release, but it successfully made it because they saw the potential in it. Since Blender is used by many artistic people like filmmakers, animators, people who create short animations, commercials, and so on, the Blender development team is thinking about taking the video sequence editor in a new direction where these people we talked about can do their work inside Blender instead of choosing to do it using another video editing software. Actually, this was the goal behind developing different tools for Blender and making it the Swiss knife it is, which is doing all the things that artists need in the production using only one software or a couple of software. I hope you found this video useful and informative. If you have something to add, you can leave it in the comment section below. Also, you can check some of our previous videos. Thank you very much and I'll see you in the next one.